Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Untitled Reviews. This being a show where I talk about TV shows that are dramas. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the series premiere of The Bear. Great series premiere. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So I went into the show having, obviously, the knowledge of what the show was about, that it was about kind of like food, more specifically, the kitchen of a restaurant, and... Obviously, like, I never really even crossed my mind and wonder, why is this show called The Bear? And it seems like there's some correlation and connection with Carmen, the main character. Um, his nickname is Bear because that's what his sister Sugar calls him. And so, also, he had that dream at the beginning. So, I was like, oh, is that what The Bear is about? Then we see, like, some, like, bear, like, drawings and stuff. Like, there's there was, like, one particular picture of, like, something that had, like, a bear on it. And I'm like, what is that all about? Like, what's the significance of that? But uh, we're kind of like jumping right in the middle of things. Like, I thought we'd get an introduction of like, okay, like, we get introduced to Carmen and then he starts working here. It's like, he's at least been working here at his brother's restaurant for a while. He kind of took over things after his brother died. They've kept it vague. We did see at one point he was kind of like thinking back to, I guess, at the morgue where maybe he had to identify the body. Or at the very least, you know, like, where they showed off the body, maybe he saw it and stayed away. We, we don't know. He definitely seems like he's keeping his distance from his family with exception of his cousin Richie because Richie is at the restaurant and works there but uh, he's kind of been avoiding his sister he's also been avoiding his mom we don't know about the father situation but it seems like even though Richie's the one that's kind of been working there for whatever reason it went to Carmen I don't because it, it seems like that fa that family's, I mean, just for the little bit we got, it does seem like there's definitely something, we, we don't know, like, whether it's like, uh, Carmen just had, like, a very distant relationship from his family, like, maybe he had to kind of get away, and he kind of got out, and he kind of got away, but now he kind of gets drawn back in, and Sugar doesn't want that for him, she's like, yo, we should sell this restaurant, because I guess maybe there's so much baggage, maybe it led to their brother's early grave, um... Or what, but she's like, I didn't want this life for you. Because he does seem like he is, we don't know his circumstances, but it does seem like he's like a high-class chef, taking all that he's learned and stuff, and then he's back home trying to build this restaurant into something else. But obviously, it's like he's kind of meeting a lot of resistance because uh, the episode title, I believe, is called System because his brother had a system here, and that's what everyone's working on. And it's like, right, here you are trying to change something that's been integrated. Like, this has been this way for so long. You're thinking you went to your fancy-pantsy schools, you went to a fancy, fancy restaurant, and you think you're better than us. Don't look down on us. We work our way. He's telling them how to do the bread. You know, it's like, right, we need to get the knife sharp, the whole chef thing, which I love. Um, Tina with the whole uh, Jeff, you know? Which I think is funny because I'm just, I associate it with Fat Man Beyond because it's like the whole like, oh, instead of Chef's Kiss, it's Jeff's Kiss. It's, it's a joke on the podcast. So it just made that click in my head of like, yeah, instead of hearing Chef, she just hears Jeff. And just to like screw with Carmen even more, she's like, yeah, Jeff, you know, just to kind of add more to it. I'd also forgotten because, like I said, I knew a little bit about the show. I can see why this show wouldn't really work for everyone. It takes an adjustment period. I mean, having only just seen one episode now, I forgot that this is one of those, like, claustrophobic shows in the regards of, like, the dialogue. It's super, like, stacked on top of each other. Things are, like, rapid fire, and, like, things are stacked on top of each other. So it's just kind of, like... Like, I think it's probably meant to feel like that because of the restaurant business. Having never, like, for one, I've never worked in, like, the service industry in general, but I've also never worked in, like, a, a restaurant setting like that, you know? So, I don't know if, like, every restaurant setting is like that, even the more fast food approaches, but, like, to kind of sit in and kind of eat that restaurant, I, I, I don't know, but... He's trying to turn this into, like, a well-oiled machine. And it, it's this interesting thing of, like, he he's a little... Karma's a little dickish, but he's not as much of an asshole as you would think he is. Like, Richie is much more the asshole as, like, fact uh, kind of brings up. Like, yeah, he's he's always been like that. It's like talking about how sad he is on the inside. And Richie's like, like yo, I heard you. And he's like, ah, crap. So... That's a whole thing of, like... But, like I said, Carmen feels like 
he is kind of butting heads with everyone, but it, there is like a level of respect. I mean, because that's what the whole chef thing is about. I never really knew what that was about. I knew it's a thing people did in restaurants, but it is meant to be a thing of, yeah, it's meant to be kind of like a respect thing. And I think he is applying that where he is trying to show everyone respect. He is kind of acting a little dictatorish, but he's getting so much pushback from everyone about everything. But he, he likes things kind of being this neat order and just like he's so used to kind of working in a more professional setting, which for them, this is a professional setting. Once again, you're coming in here screwing up the system. You don't want to cook the meals that kind of get usually cooked here like the spaghetti. It's like, no, it's not that I can't make the spaghetti. I just choose not to because we can't serve slock like that. Especially considering they are so like in the red that they're past doing so much stuff that he's selling stuff left and right just so he can make sure they can get the money they need to buy the meat. Because it's like, yo, I asked for 200 pounds. Actually, you're only getting 25 because that's what you paid for. So it's like trying to do everything he can to kind of scrounge up. It's like, once again, it's just like the rush and claustrophobic nature of just the story, the dialogue, but it's, and in, in the nature of what they're doing and being in the kitchen and stuff, like being on top of each other is very claustrophobic. So like that claustrophobia is meant to be felt in every avenue and every aspect of the story from, like I said, the dialogue, from the interactions between the characters, what they're doing, the fact this is, you know, it's in a kitchen setting where there's just so much limited space. Once again, you gotta, gotta watch your corners, you know, uh, gotta call it out so you don't bump into each other type of thing so you can avoid each other, so... Carmen is doing everything he can to bring in, you know, more customers because he's using like the arcade, slapping it, making it like a dollar because he ended up taking some of the change from there and ended up using that to try and buy more meat. Um, so that in itself kind of set them back, but it's like, right, this is like before, like we're even opening, like, um, kind of like the rush of making sure everything's ready ahead of time. Uh, but like, you know, behind the scenes of like, right, we're trying to get this all cooked and ready beforehand. Before, yeah, we have like co eventually customers lined up. They're banging on the windows. So Carmen goes out there to handle it, kind of gets tossed around and kind of hit up a little bit. And then I love Richie coming out, put with the gun in the air, being like, yo, you're going to calm down. What was it? You QAnon, 4chan, Snyder Cup motherfuckers. I was like, I love that line, by the way. And as I write, this, I hate litter, so you're going to handle this in a very orderly fashion. There's going to be a tournament. You're out, you're out. It's kind of elimination rules. And if you win, you get like free like ice seas or like ice shave or, or, or something like that for like a year or something like that. So, But then also you have him, you have Richie really pushing... Um, pushing Carmen because Carmen's like, right, we I got all these customers here. Is that like, yeah, but we don't have enough food to supply them because you won't make the stuff we normally do. Get back in there, make the damn uh, spaghetti like you're supposed to, and we're going to run this system of like, right, yeah, your Michael might have left you to restaurant, but you don't know what you're doing here. Once again, you're coming in from your world. Once again, I, I think it's also like Richie thinks like, oh, you think you're better than us when you're not. And he's trying, he doesn't have that air about him. And it's just like, right, I think this is the most efficient way. Like, we, we, we once again, we're jumped in literally the middle of everything with so much. We're picking up context here and there, but not enough. I mean... It's interesting, too, like, how much... But it's also probably, like, a little bit of the environment of, like, all right, there's a little bit of shit talking. I even love... Um, Marcus is helping out... Uh, I'm going to butcher the name, but I think it's Ibrahim. Um, like, uh, like with his shit talking, he's like, oh, no, no, you're getting better. Which I kept wondering. I was like, the actor who plays Marcus, I was like, why does he look so familiar? I think I know him from... I haven't seen it in so long, but Loiter Squad. Because I was... I kept being like... Yeah, I was like, does is is he with like Ty, part of Tyler's crew? Which I don't think he was ever odd future wise. I think he was just loiter squad wise. I know there's like bleed over between that, but I don't know if he ever did anything odd future wise. I mean, to, to be fair, like the odd future crew like ran deep. There was like so many people in odd future and so many like subgroups in odd future. So you don't really, I don't, I wasn't well versed. I'm not. I know a little bit of Odd Future. I did not. I'm not well versed in all things Odd Future. So he might have been Odd Future, and I just never knew. I, I don't know if he's still like part of like Tyler's like crew or not. Like, because uh, like I know like you know obviously like FX wise, I know like Taco. You know, obviously he's kind of doing his own thing. So I don't. I don't know if he's still like rose deep like that with Tyler's crew. Anyway, tangents and all that side. 
them even having that thing where it's like, right, we kind of take our break. We kind of say, like, get around the table, kind of talk about what we're thankful for. You know, even Tina being like, yeah, I'm, I'm thankful for you, motherfuckers. It's like, oh, look at you getting all, like, soft and stuff like that. So them kind of going around. And I, I, the point I was going to bring up is, like, Sydney's introduction and how, like, well, like, obviously, like, she really jibes with Carmen. And she kind of immediately gets in the flow of things because, well, she knows about Carmen's circumstances. It doesn't seem like the others fully know because Marcus found something that was kind of a tributed to him like of like it was kind of i think talking about his accomplishments and stuff and maybe he was going to get like some kind of reward or i mean like award or something so marcus later on was like oh so you're the real deal so he knows probably a little bit probably richie knows the most and that probably ends up being the most of why it's such a point of contention between them and the others probably know a little bit and that's why they kind of give him shit but like i said that might just be the environment of like yeah that's what we are we are family and you're kind of the new guy in so we're going to give you shit especially when you want to act like you're hot shit when you're like struggling through this, but you're also coming here and fucking up the way we kind of run things because this is a family and yeah, you're part of the family, but you're still kind of an outsider. We don't know you. Michael knows you obviously because you're his brother, but it's like, we don't know you, but maybe we do. Cause even at one point, Tina was like, yo, why is your sister not come around? And it seems like for whatever reason, once again, sugar's avoiding this place. Cause we don't know how long it's been since Michael died. Was that something way beforehand? Maybe like she didn't like the way Michael, who Michael became because of the way he was running this place. Once again, and I always say this, it it's such a stupid thing. It always kind of like messes with my head when a little bit when a character has my name. My middle name is Michael. It's the name I might not even go by. So it is always it always messes with me a little bit when I have to because it always feels weird. I feel like narcissistic. It is almost like I'm talking in the third person. It always gets me. But like I said, we just don't know have enough context for like what Sugar's issue is with this place. You know, and like I said, it, it almost seemed like Tina was kind of implying, like, it, like I said, it was before Michael even died that she stopped coming around. So, but like I also said, like, I just think it's interesting that Sid got so, like, more uh, accepted quicker than maybe because she wasn't trying to change it. She was just saying, hey, I'm a hired hand. I'm just I'm going to do my thing. Uh, whereas, like, uh, Carmen is, like, legitimately changing so much about like their menu and how they operate which i even love richie's introduction we're calling her sweetheart he's like yo yo cut off that sweetheart stuff that's fucking weird you're being a fucking weirdo and he's like what i can't say sweet he's like there you go carmen being woke he's like i didn't mean sweetheart in any way he's just like yeah that's just like the italian in me coming out you know so obviously like i said this is just the first episode so there's just not a lot there's a lot to take from but still like like i said so much context missing and like i said it is kind of an adjustment period of like right i forgot how fast paced the show is going to be at least from what i heard but i'm very excited to kind of continue it because it does seem like very interesting it gives you a perspective in a world that i haven't seen because i i, I know there's been like i don't remember i think some people have said like oh yeah this is very accurate but i obviously it's probably like it's television, so you're going to be, like, em embellishing more. But I think I've heard, like, people, who, like, who've worked these type of jobs being like, oh, yeah, this is super accurate. But I'm sure there's, like, some aspects where it's like, okay, that's exaggerated or, like, that's a smaller thing that they, you know, like I said, exaggerated and made bigger into something that it's not real. I, I don't know. I just could have sworn I remember hearing that this was pretty accurate, but I, I could be completely wrong in that uh, department. But, um... I'm excited to ultimately see uh, where the show goes, how uh, this all ends up playing out uh, going forward into the next episode. But uh, really, that's all I wanted to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.